I truly don't know what possessed me to do this. Maybe it's because I'm tracking the G1 and today they're off, so I need something to distract myself. Maybe it's because many people view death before dishonor a disappointment. I don't know. But here I am doing something I thought I'd never do. Predictions for a DDT event. Ugh. I seriously do not know why I'm doing this. Coming to us live from Ryogoku Kigokagan or the Ryogoku Sumo Hall, it is Wrestle Peter Pan 2023, which is basically DDT's biggest show of the year, or one of their biggest shows. We kick it off with Takeshi Masada against Kazuma Sumi. This one's not really a no. This one's a real no-brainer for me. I'm going to give this one to Masada, to Masada, or however you pronounce it. Seriously, Francisco, you son of a bitch. Back to back strikeouts, and the Mets don't capitalize. A bunch of motherfuckers. Game back on topic. Sorry. Moving on. Sanshiro Takagi and Shinichiro Kawamatsu. Team with Yuni to battle Masahiro Takanashi, Toy Kojima, and Rukia in a six person intergender tag match. I'm going to give this to Takagi, Kawamatsu, and Yuni. And next is, oh God, I really hate this one. I hate this team. I hate this team. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. It'll be Akito and Soma Takao, the Takao brothers, teaming with Yoshitomo. Shimo Higashi to take on the pheromones. Donchiku Dandy Dino, Yumihito Fantastic Imanati, and Yuki Sexy Eno. There are days I wish I could just go to DT and cut both Donchiku and Sexy's head off. Heads off. Sexy more so. Oh, then Dondi's. You guys already know how much I hate the fact that these are basically to go these guys are basically Taguchi from New Japan on steroids. At least with Taguchi, he landed in hot water where he's not gonna do much of the butt stuff anymore. These guys, on the other hand, have done it 24-7 since I've been keeping tabs on the promotion when I first started my Wrestle Universe account early last year. Look, I don't care if Don Ch Danny Dino's gay. I get it. It plays an integral part to his character. But that doesn't justify having to figuratively and literally flaunt and or use your ass. <sighs> Especially when there are fucking kids in the crowd. This either, at best, ends in no contest, or at worst, the pheromones win this. Though I would prefer the other side to win and put these sick bastards in their place. But unfortunately, I don't see that happening. Next up is a three-way six-man tag match. So essentially, it's nine men in the match. It'll be Naruki Doi. Toru Owashi and Kazuki Hirata teaming against Damnation, Totally Addicted, Minoru Fujita, MJ Paul, and Kanan 
and Kotaro Suzuki, Yusuke versus Kotaro Suzuki, Yusuke Okada, no relation to Kazuchika Okada, and Yuya Kuroku. This is a tough one. Not sure how talented all nine of these guys are. I know a little bit about Kotaru from what he was in Noah last year as part of Paris Del Mal before he quit. Before he got before he went freelance and got signed to DDT. I know a little bit about the Damnation Totally Addicted faction, both from their showing at the Cyber Fight Festival last year and the Karen Watches Wrestling video. You know, where she broke down the basics of the dramatic dream team promotion. I'm going to give this one to Damnation TA. Next up, the special joke mascot tag team match. Cheetan and Pokotan team against Andre the Giant Panda and Super Sasa Dango Machine. Ugh. Still in the undercard, and right off the bat, and I'm still. And I'm already getting annoyed with this card. For those wondering, Polkotan, Andre the Giant Panda, and Panda and Cheetan are basically mascot people dressed in those giant inflatable mascot suits. You know the ones I'm talking about, right? You sometimes see them at cosplay conventions with people dressed in giant inflatable dinosaur suits, Pikachu suits, or what have you. Super Sasadango. Okay, now we're starting. After we get the crap out of the way, let's move on to a special tag match. Yukio Naya's return to the ring. He teams with Hash Hadashima to take on the duo of Shigehiro, I Shigehiro Ire of the Strong Hearts and June Akiyama. Now we're getting somewhere with this damn card. It's age versus youth, experience versus enthusiasm, or a combination. I'm going to give this one to Naya and Hashima. Next up, Taka Michinoku against Mao. KG Vet, Young Fireball. Considering Taka has been eating a lot of pins since he is nearing the end of his career at 49, going on 50. I'm going to give this to Mao. Next up, Yuki Ueno versus former DDT ace turned AEW Black Hat at Konosuke Takeshita. Will Cyrus the Virus Don Callis accompany him? Don't surprise me. And this is mainly going to be done just to mock Kenny Omega in the build-up to All In. With a match where Ibushi will be in Kenny's corner and Callis will be in Takeshita's. Where, if Kenny wins the match, he gets five minutes alone in the ring with Callis to do whatever the fuck he wants to the little bastard. Unless, of course, Ibushi stabs Kenny in the back. But then again, Coda, you waited four years to finally pull the trigger and jump on Kenny in AEW. That's your fault on the mistiming, not Kenny's. You want to stay to become the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, Coda. And when you did, what happened? You basically got bullied around by the front office. To the point you nearly wanted to commit suicide. I last year. That took you another full year to get your head out of your ass. And then jump ship to AEW when your contract ran out. Like I said, Abushi, that's on your head. Not Kenny's. That said, I am taking Takeshita to win this. Next up, the KOD six-man titles. The team, the champions, 
Kazuri, Kaz, Kazusara Higuchi, Ryota Nakatsu, and Yuki Yoshida take on Hideki Okatani, Sakai Akai, Saki Akai, and Yukio Sakaguchi. My pick to win this one, I don't know how long the champs have held the six man. Man, but to hell with it. I want to see Aka, Aki win it. At least one title that's not the open, that's not the DDT Iron Man, which is basically their version of the hardcore slash 24 7 title. And believe me, I cannot run down the champions of this belt with a straight face. There have been various wrestlers, but they've also had animals, school kids, <laughs> and objects, including Yoshiko the blow up doll, and I want to point out. Food. And newscasters hold this title. I seriously can't talk about the KOD the Heavy Metal Iron Man Championship without busting a fucking gut. I seriously can't. I just can't. And I'm giving it to Sakaguchi, Akai, Akai, and Okitani. Now we get the dramatic dream match in the semi main, in one of the triple main events. Daisuke Sasaki, the leader of Damnation Totally Addicted, takes on El Desperado of New Japan. Make this a death match. This should have been called dramatic death match, not dramatic dream match. I mean, for those wondering, yes, DDT has dabbled quite a bit in the death match spectrum. Granted, it's a little more toned down when compared to something like Game Changer or Combat Zone. And for those wondering, my experiences with those two promotions, I've been to one show of the former but I've never been to a show of the latter. In other words, I've been to DDT, I mean, I've been to GCW, but not to CZW. And what I've seen of GCW, it's not terrible. Bad. I mean, it's okay for what it is, but I mean, it's competent for what it is, but it's not horrendous. Anyway, my pick to win, I'm going to give this to Despy. Next up, for the DDT Universal Championship, Tetsuya Endo of the Burning takes on in defense against. Matt Cardona with Steph DeLander. The former Zack Ryder. I mean, his wife recently won the women's tag titles with Sonya Deville. I really do not like the characters of overbearing, slut, whiny, bitchy Karens. Things who don't take any responsibility for their own shortcomings. For those wondering... What, well, not fan of Green or DeVille's characters? Now, Matt Cardona has been making a lot of rounds in the Indies. He's won the GCW title at one point. He's been Impact Digital Media Champion, I believe. And he's really upgraded himself as a month, as this jackass King of Indies heel character. But when the lights are on bright, can he win? I don't know. On the one hand, it would make sense to put the belt on the show. He's quite the pirate. 
infiltrating other promotions and then taking off with their titles. But on the other hand, and you want the home def home champion to def keep the belt at home. Let's bring out the silver dollar of destiny. If the coin lands on heads, I'm picking Endo. Tails, Cardona. Here we go. Heads. Endo to retain. Finally, the main event. For the big prize in DDT, the King of Dream Open Weight Championship match. Yuji Hino defends against the King of the DT King of DT tournament winner back in the spring, Chris Brooks of the CBK. As far as I'm concerned, triggers gotta get pulled. Well, this can't be dragged off on any longer. Brooks has been wanting this fight for months now. I mean and you gotta wonder how traumatized Yuji is after what happened in May. May when he fought Yuki Ino, who was meant to go the whole whole tour, leading to Max Bump in Yokohama as not sexy, only for him to revert to sexy near the end of the match. Yes, I have watched that match, and while it's good for what it is, good. It just got too overwrit booked. But then again, isn't any pheromones match overbooked? Any match over involving the pheromones overbooked? But then again, when is any match involving the pheromones not overbooked? As for my pick to win, I'm going to give it to Chris Brooks to walk out of the soup of Ria Goku, the new KOD open weight champion. He'll be the one holding the big prize in DDT. <sighs> okay, first time doing this wasn't that terrible for me. But if we can get the comedy shit out of the way as fast as we can, this will be a good show. That's all I got for this video. Leave a comment, smash the like, and sub to the channel. This is Mets 2128 signing out. So goodbye and good night. Bang. And cut.